Hey YouTube, Bob here. Welcome to World of Nintendo. I've got a lot more content like this on the way, so be sure to subscribe and hit the bell for notifications. Give this video a thumbs up and leave a comment to let me know what you think. Here we go! In this edition of Nintendo Unboxed, we're going to be taking a look at the Japanese version of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, or the Legend of Zelda Triforce of the Gods, as it was known there. And uh, that's one of the examples of some of the regional changes that were made to the U.S. version. Some of the religious terminology was removed. So the, here we have uh, Zeruda no Densets, and then I'm not quite sure how to say Triforce of the Gods there. There is uh, quite a bit of Katakana, however, so that is to ra i Fosu. So that's definitely the word for Triforce. Um, so that first part is of the gods. So let's take a look at this version of the game that came out in Japan in 1991. A calendar year earlier, but not necessarily a full 12 months earlier than the U.S. version that would release in 1992. But right away we see the difference in the... Uh, vertical orientation of the artwork versus the horizontal orientation that we would see in other regions. And then the artwork itself, I much prefer this beautiful um, rendition of the Master Sword here in the stone with the shafts of light coming through the trees and the Lost Woods. I love the green color too. I think this looks so much nicer than the uh, plain gold background we got with that new Zelda logo. But, oh well, uh, the game remains just as excellent in both regions. So we see the Super Famicom logo up at the top here. On the long side, the name of the game. Zeruda no then sets, but no, uh, no indication that this is Triforce of the Gods. Interesting. Just Legend of Zelda, basically. On this bottom short side, we just have a color. Here we've got the Super Famicom name and no title of the game, just a part number here. And then on the top, we've got the Zeruda no Den sets. Again, no indication of what version of the game this is. Triforce of the Gods. But we will see that on the back. Got some nice illustrations here of Link and Princess Zelda and a screenshot. And then, of course, some text describing the game. So let's take a look and see what we have inside. So this instruction manual is actually a bit taller than some of the other ones we would see with Super Famicom games, and that stands to reason because, well, there's quite a bit going on in Legend of Zelda games. So let's take a look and see what we have in this beautiful instruction booklet. If we actually open it up, we see that the artwork continues on over the front and back covers, which is kind of a nice touch. We've got a table of contents, most likely. We didn't see this. This we did not get in our U.S. version manual. We got a full map here, and it's not an illustration. This is actually a screenshot of that Mode 7 rendered overworld map, at least for the light world. This we did get. We got some beautiful illustrations here with the backstory of the game. Yep, I remember all of these illustrations, along with copious amounts of text here describing what's going on. Excellent art with Link to the Past. Got the same illustrations of Link and Zelda, I believe, from the back of the box. Registering your name here. Again, though, like with the U.S. version, if you put Zelda is your name, you did not unlock a second quest right away. Got your on-screen display and then your sub-screen. How to navigate the map here and then how each function is mapped to particular buttons here. I like you can kind of see the A, B, and Y. Everything was color-coded and that was kind of a, that was a trope that carried through to the, uh, to the uh, menu screen here. You can see that things you would use with the A button, they're outlined in red. With the Y button, they're in green. So those colors actually match the buttons on the Super Famicom and the um, European Super 
Super Nintendo Entertainment System controller, but they never changed these to light purple and or lavender and purple uh, to do the color coding for our regional controller. Kind of interesting there. Using the buttons and the D-pad, again, Link could move in eight directions instead of just four, which was a very welcome improvement from the original Legend of Zelda. Going through dungeons, using the, what you could do with the B button, mainly your sword. Talking about how to use some of your weapons from the subscreen with the green Y button. Navigating with that Mode 7 map. And going through your items here that help Link uh, gain access to new areas like the flippers and the gloves. How to save your game using Select. Didn't have to do a special song and dance on the second player controller to save your game and end it like you did with the original Legend of Zelda. Thinking about hearts, magic, and replenishing those. Here, how the heart containers were broken up into four pieces this time. That was a new mechanic. In the original Legend of Zelda, you would just find a whole new heart container. Here, you had to piece them together. Bushes and finding rupees in different denominations. In the dungeons, first you're finding the pendants in the light world, and then the crystals in the dark world. And then a trope carried over from the original Legend of Zelda, getting the map to navigate better, and the compass to find your, uh, to locate where the boss was. Your treasure, your new weapon would be found in a big chest. And of course you needed the big key to be open, to be able to open the chest and get through the door to fight the final boss in that dungeon. Rather extensive map screen for the dungeons in this game because a lot of them had multiple floors. This is actually a very short one with only two floors. I think the max in this game was around seven or eight floors. A lot of times you would fall from an upper level to a lower level. Unique things you would find in a dungeon including the crystal switches. And then going through your inventory items here. Quite a few in this game. Each Zelda game would see an increase in items. And I think I've mentioned before that one criticism that might be levied uh, on this game is there's some underdeveloped items here like this uh, magic cape and the cane or staff of Berna. They just aren't used all that much so uh, could probably go through the game without them. The staff of Samaria though creating the blocks you did need that quite extensively in the Turtle Rock dungeon. And the different medallions for magic spells, that was always fun. And then going through a little bit more of the exposition, sending you off on your quest here and showing you the beasts that you would come across. Some of them carried over from the original Legend of Zelda, like Stalfos, and then the Wiz Robes, and the Gibdo. But definitely not a complete bestiary, just a couple of them here. Now this we didn't see here in the U.S. version of the manual. We actually have, uh, looks like almost ads for the first two games, the original Legend of Zelda and Zelda II, A Link to the Past. And I've mentioned in my unboxing videos that uh, video game consoles, particularly Nintendo ones, seem to have a much longer lifespan in Japan than in other regions. This game came out in 1992. I think that the uh, Famicom wouldn't uh, be discontinued in Japan for another 11 years in 2003. So it was definitely viable to have ads here for uh, the first two games. But by this point, 1992, well, the NES was well on its way out. So they didn't advertise the first two games to us. However, they did reissue them as uh, classic editions for that redesigned top loader of the NES. So here's the cartridge, standard Japanese cartridge and European cartridge. I've mentioned I really prefer this version of the cartridge. It looks a whole lot nicer than the blocky, boxy design that we got. However, sadly, no end labels. The U.S. cartridge design did at least uh, have end labels, so that was nice. A couple other things we have included 
in the package we've got the warning for the AC adapter which was pretty common with Super Famicom games and then this kind of quick reference card we saw these in several Japanese Super Famicom games but never got them in US Super Nintendo Entertainment System games just uh, a quick reference card so you didn't have to go searching through the manual wait what wait what what, what do the buttons do? You could keep this uh, handy while you were playing. So you got your button map right here on the, on the one side, and then on the reverse side it looks like you got a description about uh, what several, if not all, of the inventory items did. So that was kind of a nice touch here. So there you have the Japanese version of The Legend of Zelda A Link to the Past, or Triforce of the Gods as it was known in Japan. I hope you enjoyed this unboxing video and will stay tuned for more just like it as well as lots of other content that I'll have for you here at World of Nintendo. So until the next one, take care.